Hello and welcome back to another session of Steve Shop Talk. Today the topic is RV air conditioners. I have a lot of attention on my channel to the mini split installation that I did. There's obviously a lot of interest in the RV community towards mini splits. I think it's a fabulous way to go. One of the things I've been wanting to do for a while is to help people understand feature comparisons between the different types of air conditioners. What I've done is I've spent literally a couple, three days here uh, coming up with some very detailed analysis of several different types of air conditioners. What I'm going to present to you is that analysis. Not being too long-winded, let's just dig into the details. The basis of this analysis is uh, a large amount of data that I have gathered uh, relative to all the different models under consideration and I've incorporated it into a single spreadsheet and, and the spreadsheet is here on, the, on the, the computer and this is what we're going to be using as a tool to follow the, the logical investigation. So it's probably important that I give you a little tour of this spreadsheet here. On the top of the spreadsheet I have the, the general uh, type class rated capacity, what type of compressor, what type of expansion valve, and what type of refrigerant the unit uses. This is just the, the basic discriminators of my three different models which are the Amana 8000 window unit, a Pioneer mini split, an LG mini split, two Coleman rooftops and the Pneumatic 3000 which is a 12 volt DC unit. In, in the case of, of organization these units are organized going from left to right in order of price. We have the window unit at 270, the, the Pioneer uh, mini split at 788, the LG at 869, the Coleman rooftops at 870 and 1130 respectively, and the Nomadic DC unit at a whopping $4,590. So that's the, the array of products. And immediately below that it, it describes what type they are. This $270 is a packaged window unit. Uh, the Pioneer is a mini split heat pump. The LG is a mini split heat pump. The Coleman Mox, both, both models are packaged roof ACs, and the Nomadic is also a roof AC. Their rated capacities, and this is where the spreadsheet really comes in important, is because the rated capacity of these units are different. So direct comparison of the numbers can be problematic if you don't pay attention to what their capacities are. So the window unit is only 8,000 BTUs, the two mini splits are 9,000 BTUs, the two roof units are 13,500 BTUs, and then the final, the, the nomadic roof unit is 11,800 BTUs. So there is a, a little bit of range involved in the sizing of these things, and, and the, the spreadsheet and the calculations in the spreadsheet take the sizing into account. Um, so that's one of the important features we're going to have to get to. Probably one of the biggest delineators is in, on my line that says compressor. On the compressor, we have different kinds of compressor motors and different kinds of compression uh, mechanisms. So this is, in, in the case of the window unit, is a single phase, single speed piston compressor. And that is in gray because that's an assumption. I couldn't actually verify that. The mini splits are different. They are three phase motors driven by a variable frequency drive using a scroll compressor. So modern technology versus old, I'll say tried and true, but tried and inefficient technologies. The different technologies and the compressors is really what is, sets these units apart and what makes an efficient unit and, a, and a, an economical unit uh, from an operating perspective important. There's also different expansion valve characteristics. The expansion valve characteristics go along with the uh, variable nature of the compressors. If it has a highly variable compressor, it's going to have to have an electronic expansion valve in order to keep up. Uh, four of the six only have simple expansion devices and the two mini splits have sophisticated expansion devices. And I have the refrigerant type in here mostly just to note that they all use the same refrigerant with the exception of the 12 volt unit which uses a automotive refrigerant. So that's the orientation of the spreadsheet. Now we're going to dig into the differences as we started. High. We're, going to, we're going to look at the, the LG mini split versus the older Coleman rooftop air conditioner. And we're going to dig down into the details of those and describe how they're different. And that will really set the tone for how the whole overall comparison works. Drilling down into the spreadsheet, we're going to look at these, these first two rows for the, the LG mini split and the Coleman rooftop. Uh, these are probably the most important and most revealing uh, specifications here. If we look at the capacity line of the LG, we see three different capacities listed. This is nominally a 9,000 BTU unit, 
but this is being a variable capacity and it can, can reduce its capacity all the way down to about 3,000 BTUs and all the way up to almost 10,500 BTUs. And this is a very significant feature of this, this device because it helps to manage the performance uh, overall. As opposed to the Coleman, which is a 13,500 BTU unit, which is a single fixed capacity unit. It only, its only method that it can use to vary its capacity is by turning on and, and turning off. Um, if it needs to, if it's overcooling the room, the only alternative is for it to shut down and, and wait some time and then come back on again. Um, the next line that's of interest is how much power each of these units take to operate at this. So this 9,000 BTU unit requires 732 watts to produce that 9,000 BTUs. This 13,500 BTU unit requires 14,000 watts to produce that 13,500 BTUs. These two pieces of information can be used to calculate the energy efficiency ratio of the units, which is the next couple of lines. So I'm just going to point these out and then we'll explain them. So the efficiency rating of this unit is 12.3. That is the ratio of 9,000 BTUs to 732 watts. The same comparison for the rooftop unit is the ratio of 13,500 BTU to 14,000 watts. So that ratio for the LG unit is 12.3 and the ratio for the um, Roof unit is 9.6. Um, this, this seemingly makes sense, although this unit is larger than this unit. This unit uses about half the amount of power this one does. So overall, this unit produces essentially 12.3 units of cooling for every kilowatt used, and this unit produces 9.6 units of cooling for every kilowatt used. This is the basic energy efficiency ratio that is used uh, in, in terms of air conditioner capacities, you're often seeing what is called the seasonal energy efficiency ratio, or SEER. The SEER varies from the EER in that the seasonal portion of the EER means that this is its, its energy efficiency over the entire heating season. There's a fairly complex uh, listed number of days at certain temperatures that a manufacturer uses to calculate the seasonal EER. It is not something that you can arbitrarily calculate from information. You have to have very intimate information on the performance of the unit in order to calculate it. Uh, we can't do that. Uh, in general, variable systems have not only better EERs, but much better SEERs than fixed capacity units. But for the purpose of this examination, we're going to fix ourselves on the energy efficiency ratio, EER, which is its performance at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And so all of the data in this chart is computed on using those figures. So the performance cooling, performance in the, in the upper section here is for cooling. There's also performance in here for heating because while the um, heat pump, the mini split is a heat pump, it includes a heating capacity at the same time as its cooling capacity. It all comes in a single unit. The rooftop air conditioning system does not. Its heating capacity comes from the installation of an additional uh, resistance element in the heater that provides heat. And the, the two different methods of, of electrical heat here are very important. So going back to the LG unit, we can see that, that, that the 875 watts are required to produce 10.9 kilowatts of electric heat. Again, using the same ratio, this is called a coefficient of performance. So that what the, this 10.9 units of heat generated by 875 watts means that 3.65 units of heat are created for every one unit of electrical power. And that's powerful. It produces a much larger ratio of heat per unit energy used. It's very efficient. Uh, on, opposed to the Coleman Mach uh, unit, it produces 5.6 kilowatts of heat, which is about half of what the uh, mini split produces, but it requires more than twice as much power in order to produce it. So its efficiency at producing this is about maybe just a little over a quarter of what the, the uh, mini split produces. So if you were to use this for heating your, your RV, uh, you can get four times more heat out of the heat pump than you can get out of the heat strip that's installed in the rooftop air conditioning. And this is a, 
a very powerful thing. And if you are one who likes to spend time in RV parks where you're plugged in, this can be a very efficient method of heating your camper as opposed to using a propane heater. Continuing on with the comparison, the next comparison section here is, is looks at the airflow of the fans in the unit. Uh, I think we're all very familiar with the loud blazing uh, sound of the fans in a rooftop unit. Um, so we'll start with the rooftop unit first. In this particular case, this rooftop unit produces 300, uses 320 cubic feet a minute of air circulation to move its heat. Uh, the reason why it's in yellow is because this 320 cubic feet is actually significantly insufficient based on normal uh, heating and air conditioning standards. Normally speaking, 12,000 BTU units should re require 400 uh, cubic feet a minute. This is a 13,500, so this 320 should be on the order of 420 or 450 cubic feet a minute in order to be optimally efficient. The problem with this is, is even at 320 cubic feet a minute, this unit has a noise level over 60 decibels. This is a loud conversation with you in the same room. That's the magnitude of 60 decibel sound. And I think we're all experienced with that with having a rooftop AC, so that's why I uh, make this comparison first. So now we're going to slide over and compare the indoor unit of the LG Mini Split. Uh, to start off with, again, reminding you that this is only a 9,000 BTU unit, and it has, at a highest speed, 459 cubic feet of air, which is well more than it. This is, this is the amount of air that it uses what's in, when it's on the jet mode, which is producing 10,000 or uh, 33, 330 BTUs. But even at that uh, volume level, that it, its noise level is only a 42 decibel, and 42 decibel is uh, probably somebody having a conversation in the room next to you with the door closed. It is not loud at all. And so if you compare these relative air velocities where, uh, uh, to their respective noise capacities, you'll notice that the indoor unit of the mini split is, I don't want to say virtually silent, it is effectively silent because you will not be disturbed by any of the noise coming from this unit. Whereas this uh, rooftop unit, it's a thundering herd. It's the air noise, the compressor noise, all bleeding on the ceiling above you, uh, turning the ceiling of the RV into a bass drum. So that is a, a huge difference in these two, and it's also part of the efficiency difference in the two. Moving on from the airflow noise issue it are some calculated um, standards that I have down here in the bottom which help to understand some of the comparative effects because these are different sizes, because they consume different amounts of energy. How good are they at certain things is really what this area intends to develop. So comparing directly just the physical size of the units although this this unit is only four is only 9000 BTUs it only occupies four and a half cubic feet which is just under under excuse me just over half of what the roof air conditioner occupies total space so so this unit is bigger this unit is smaller but this is still more space efficient the next line is what's the combined weight so these this is a two-piece system, and both pieces combined still weigh less than the entire unit that's sitting on the roof of your RV. Um, and how space efficient is it? This is a ratio of space efficiency, where a higher number is better. And so this produces 2,000 BTUs per cubic foot used. This produces 1.7 uh, cubic BTUs per cubic foot used. And comparing how much benefit you can come from, come from the unit, I measured how much heating and cooling it produces versus the, versus the cost of the unit. So this unit produces essentially, for $38, this unit produces 1,000 BTUs of either heating or cooling. In this particular case, the same rooftop unit takes about $65 to produce the same one unit of cooling. So because this one heats and cools, and this one only cools, this, is, this unit is much more efficient. If you want to just focus on the cooling cost alone, that's the next line here where, where the mini split is slightly more expensive because the units cost the same and it produces less cooling, it's slightly more expensive if just used for cooling. But if you use it for both, you're going to find it be, to be much more ex, uh, efficient. Couple other, you know, again, comparing what the, how much air it moves to how much noise it makes, these four numbers are equivalent to the four fan speeds. It moves 11 units of air 
for the one unit of noise it makes. This one moves five units of air for the one unit of noise it makes. LG Mini Split is more than twice as efficient in moving air without making noise. Now that I've gone through in, in some excruciating detail on the comparison of the Mini Split versus the standard rooftop, um, I want to expand a little bit on the rest of the units considered under this study without going to such gross detail. Um, so I'm just going to go from left to right and so the Amana 8000 BTU window unit has some very attractive features. It's inexpensive, it's fairly efficient, it does a pretty good job, but it's noisy and potentially not very attractive. The next one is the Pioneer Mini Split made by a Chinese company. It's a good product. It's probably it's not a great product and it's and for a little bit more money you can buy a great product. This unit does a lot of the things that the LG Mini Split does, but it doesn't have the, the, the capacity range. It only has about half of the capacity range of the LG Mini Split and it doesn't have enough airflow. It's it is a noisier unit and the airflow is still not as adequate as it should be. Uh, moving on to the more modern rooftop AC, it doesn't have a whole lot going for, more going for it than the old style rooftop AC does. It, it has a two-speed motor, it is a little bit more efficient, it is a little bit less noisy, but it is still very noisy. It still doesn't have a, a, a quality form of backup heat. It's heavy, what else can I say? It's, it's a roof clunker, they're, they're just not uh, fun machines to be around. But kind of leading into that, there's a lot of people who really think that they, they like the roof AC form factor, and so their idea of, of the miraculous solution is a DC-powered roof air conditioner. So that's what we have in the last one. And the first thing you note about this air conditioner, it's about three to four times the cost of a standard roof AC today. It has a little bit less capacity. It has about the same noise. It has the same noise problems of other roof ACs that it has an in-your-face fan that's right there next to your head uh, and it's always going to be noisy as it tries to pull all this air out of the camper, condition it, and then send it back into the camper. Its one virtue is that it does have a fairly light weight. I'm not sure how important that is. Uh, it's not that much lighter, and it, it, but it is highly inefficient. The comment on that is, is that in general, brushless DC motors can be much more efficient than most other motor types. The conditions under which they can be most efficient requires them to have a high voltage operation. Meaning if you have a low voltage such as 12 volts, it requires a lot of amps to operate the motor. They do not operate efficiently at low amperage and they never will. If you think that you're trying to get away from the you know, 8 to 10 percent efficiency loss by running power through an inverter, you're going to have 8 to 10 percent efficiency loss running power through the DC motor controller as well. You can't get away from it. It's a virtue of the fact that semiconductors don't like high currents, and that's just the way that things are. If you truly want to go to a DC uh, unit, there are DC mini splits made. They're 48 volt or higher, and that's how they obtain the high efficiencies is they get away from the high amperages inherent in low voltage DC power. That's just the physics of it. Thanks for hanging out with the shop talk for me. Uh, this has been a fairly tedious exercise, so I hope you've made it this far. Um, if you're interested in some of the specific information that's in here, this spreadsheet and my 12-page write-up that goes along with all this uh, will be located in workingonexploring.com slash techdocs. Um, additionally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile all of the source documents from each of the manufacturers that I use to, to create this, this spreadsheet If there's because there's other information there that you may be interested in. Uh, I just tried to, to pull the most relevant pieces and that will be available there too. Again, I'm not trying to, to encourage or discourage use of any one of these pieces of equipment. Uh, make your own choices. Uh, if you have questions about some of the specifications that you see, you know, feel free to get in contact with me and, and I'll help, help you understand what it means and, and, and why it's important or why it's not important. But anyway, thanks for coming along for the ride. I appreciate following. Please like and subscribe.